Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the iFox with Juice podcast. Uh, just a disclosure, Google Hangouts, which is the way that we usually been recording the podcast since, well, since the beginning, has basically shut down. So we've been scrambling through trying to find a, a way around it, and we had to settle with Skype. So if there's any sound issues, anything out of the ordinary, you can get at me after the show. You can drop a comment. Let us know what's up. So we hope everything's cool, but if there's any issues, it's most likely a uh, cause of that. So just wanted to put a little disclaimer out. But anyway, thank you guys for listening. I'm your host, Juice. And I'm here with my co-host, the Star Wars-inspired dome to my Kanye West. Reen, what's up, Reen? <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, man, you, he just showed me that picture of Kanye West with this project. So, yeah, that's another reason why I'm cracking up because I, I just don't get it. Yeah, and for you guys that don't know, and it's there's really no reason for you to know, but I love Kanye West because of his fucking mental illness. I, I, I'm I not one of these people that feel bad or am repulsed by his the stupid shit that he says. I find it endless, endlessly entertaining, and I love that nobody sticks up for him, so I'm just going to keep making fun of him. Yeah, this dude thinks that building these like old-style Star Wars Tatooine-like huts these like dome houses he thinks it's the answer to poverty and to the difference in classes and the divide between the rich and the poor there's nothing that says how he can do this it's not like these things are self-sustaining it's not like they're energy efficient it's not like they're solar powered that they can nothing he it, the only thing is that there's going to be sun coming in through the roof which is basically a sunlight which is something that a lot of houses have he just wants something that he thinks looks cool, but it has absolutely no purpose. It's so funny, man. He watched Star Wars. <laughs> he was inspired by Star Wars. Well, actually, Rain, I mean, you're a big Star Wars fan, right? Yeah. That's but, what I'm cracking <laughs> up. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, if you had if you had Kanye West money, if you had fuck you money, I mean, would you even think ever about doing something like this? No. Like, to just to design your house like this, even though it wouldn't hurt you to do it? Yeah, I mean, I've had a lot of time and money like that. Like, I guess I would, but, I mean, would I think to do it to, to I don't know, make it seem like everybody's equal and not have all these cookie-cutter houses everywhere? I guess. <laughs> but uh-huh. who knows, man? Like, he's so bored. Is it really mental illness? Or it is mental. Bored? No, it's mental illness, man. The dude's fucking crazy. The <laughs> when he had that meeting with Trump when he wanted to design his plane, when I saw that shit, I was like, man, this dude's this dude's lost it. This dude's what? lost it. But it's, oh, you didn't know about that? No, I try not to dabble in politics. Well, that was a weird thing because it was entertainment dabbling with politics. But yeah, he went to the White House and he was like. Oh Trump, uh, Air Force One's played out, man. Like here, I got some designs, and he came, went to his phone and he showed him some pictures. Like I've been working on these designs for years, man. This, this is what we, this is how we're gonna like pimp Air Force One out type shit. <laughs> I had no idea. That's for See? real. Oh my God! See, I'm not a Kanye West fan, and I don't really care for politics either. So I thought it was just funny that he showed up there, and I think he wore one of those hats, "Make America Great Again" or something. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did, right? Yeah. I just have that image, but I had no idea he was trying to pimp out the Air Force One. Jesus. Mm-hmm. I've heard it all now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, that was a, that was a, yeah, that was just some bullshit we came across right before the beginning of the show. But we got a, we got a lot of show for you guys. We're not going to get too much into the preview this weekend because the cards that the goddamn what 12 o'clock i ain't got time for the shit we're on the west coast and i'm not going to give it the time of day so we're going to cover only three fights from that we're going to get into our review of ufc 240 uh, n- uh news matchups the whole deal so let's just jump into it let's get straight into it let's go with our rewind of ufc 240 
Yeah, so uh, let's start from the bottom. Davidson Figueredo beat Alexander Pantoja, and, and they got $50,000 in the process, got fight of the night. Um, it was an excellent fight, but um, I, I don't know. I'm just It's kind of weird. I'm still kind of wondering what Figueredo does next. He's calling out Cejudo because, of course, he is. But Benavides is still the rightful number one contender, and we didn't know what's going to happen yet. So it seems like people are just naturally saying interim fight him and Benavides, but I don't know, Rain. Is there any? Does, what options does he have? What do you think? I don't know. Like I don't understand. It, I mean, he won, but it really means nothing at this point. Can he even move up in the rankings or anything? Like they're just still the same. Yeah, because I think him and Pantoja were like three and four. Yeah. Um, just like uh, yeah, at least he didn't lose anything anything type thing. Right. So I guess do an interim. I don't know, man. It's so weird. I heard it was a good fight. I didn't get to see it. Um, I didn't it, get to watch the the UFC 240 until the main card. But yeah, it it, it was good, and I, I'm gonna try to find a way to show it to you. But yeah, you 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 should you should watch it. If you can't find it, out, let me know, and I'll I'll see what I can find. But um, well, the next the next fight, another fight that we covered was Alexis Davis versus Vivian Araujo. Uh, Vivian won a unanimous decision. Uh, Davis had her moments, but Araujo just, she seemed prepared. She seemed prepared and, um, she did real good. Uh, spoke some English after the fight in her, in her post-fight interview, pr- pretty impressively, I might add. And, um, yeah, I mean, she's definitely a star on the rise. My only thing is, I don't know if, I don't know how they're going to build her up. You know, I, 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 I'm of the belief that she should be brought up very slowly, but, you brought to my attention earlier about her age, so I'm kind of conflicted now. Yeah, she's like 32 years old, but I mean, in the past year, she fought in three different divisions, so she can do it all. You know, I'm surprised that she didn't, she wasn't in even on the rankings for flyweight. She's actually ranked in phantom weight, which I don't understand because she beat Alexis Davis. I think Alexis Davis is what? I think she was number seven coming in number coming eight. in on Saturday. Number eight, and then she moved up one, so she's number seven. So I thought that would just put her right there, like so close to a title fight, but I guess not. Yeah, the, I don't know. May, maybe there's something that she told the UFC, I don't want to cut weight, so I'm going to go to Bantamweight, but that doesn't really make sense. I mean... Alex Davis is one of the better fighters at flyweight. If you could beat her, you could beat most girls in there, I think. So I, I don't I don't know what's happening with that whole ranking shit is bullshit. Shout outs to uh Steven Rivers to the WMMA yearbook for bringing this to my attention in the this morning. Um giving me this topic basically because yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I didn't even know you were the one that told me about her ranking at Bantamweight. Like, I guess it could just be a stupid mistake, but god damn it, man. If you can't knock the shit out of a girl in your first fight who's 20 pounds heavier than you and then beat a, a pioneer, a legend like Alexis Davis and you're not even getting recognition for it. That's that's some utter bullshit. Yeah, I don't get that. Like, Why wouldn't you use all that footage and you know, market her? I, I don't get it. She's definitely marketable. She really is. She, she's, you know, she's learning English quickly it seems like. I, I, I think she's attractive if that's a it seems like that's always the thing with women. So, yeah, I, mean, I guess you have that. She's exciting as hell. Obviously, she can yeah. knock girls out. And then, I mean, if you want to go with the other side of it, of her just being an interesting character and being a, a super nice person, she said in one of her uh, backstage interviews that uh, she wants to help women suffering from domestic violence and that she said, you know, you're not alone. I believe you and I'm willing to... F- to help out any woman who wants to learn self-defense, uh, you know, to defend her and her and her children from from a man. So that that really speaks to me. I think that can speak to anybody. And I think, you know, I I think she's got it all there. I think I don't know. I I, I I'm still conflicted. I, even with this, I don't know if they should push her more or they should just hold her steady. I'm I'm still conflicted. I think they should push her more. I think she can do it. I think she's proved it. Already, yeah, her straw weight fight that she fought 
the past year. It wasn't with the UFC, but still that she's just she was able to do three different weight classes, like make weight for each one. Like Oh, she had a strawway fight earlier this year as well? Yeah, within the year. But it oh, wasn't with the UFC, so it's like three different weight classes, man. Like and wow. she's she's majority of her fights are finishes, so mm-hmm. yep. So she's exciting, man. Like I, I can't wait to see her, you know, fight again and see what else she does. Like, because Alexis Davis is a she's a tough one, man. But I was going for Vivian. So who who do you suggest for her to fight next? Because I mean, KGB's booked up, JoJo's booked up. Uh, obviously, she's not gonna fight Shevchenko, and she's gonna fight Carmouche and well, next week already. It seems like the top girls are booked up. I mean, what Jessica I? That's possible. Caitlyn? That's another one. Caitlyn just won two. I don't know. that. I mean, if she beats Caitlyn, that's like, that's number one territory right there. I mean, remember, Liz Carmouche just got in there because they needed a main event and Shevchenko didn't get hurt in her fight. So they just kind of like, all right, you, you go in there. But Caitlyn yeah. is the number, Caitlyn really is the number one contender. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough, man, because I mean... Laura Murphy, she already she has a fight this card, right? Or no? Yeah, I believe she. I, I want to say it was it's the Italian girl, um, uh, Mara Bo- Borello, something like that. I can never say her yeah. name. It's like a lot of R's. Yeah, they're all booked up. Like Montana De La Rosa, like she just fought. Macy Barr was gonna be fighting again. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that later on. Yeah, that's that's true. Paige yeah. Paige Van Zandt is who knows where she is. Yeah, so I don't know, man. And yeah, she's ranked with Bantamweight, so it's like, what the hell? Jessica Rose Clark, I don't know what's happening with her either. I'm assuming they're going to put her on that Australia card, but who knows? Yeah, I think she's still recovering, though. She I broke her arm or something? Who, did she have knee surgery? Something's going on. I thought it was a leg injury. I forgot what it was. So. Yeah, well, I mean, she definitely has options. But yeah, I, I guess just wait and see. I'm I'm just going to go with you for now, I guess. I I guess we'll. I'll go with you until further notice, until I see something else. So, yeah, following you here. Uh, going to the main card, uh, Jeff Neal. That's the fight we're all waiting for. That's the fight we started talking about with the main card, Jeff Neal and Nico Price. He gets a second round TKO, and it seems like there was some controversy with the stoppage. I was totally fine with it. I'm of the opinion when your when your head starts bouncing off the canvas like a basketball, the fight's done. What did you think of it, Rain? Same. He was taking a beating, man. It was crazy. Crazy. Neil's corner just yelling at him to, like, take half guard. Like, he completely disregarded. I'm, like, cracking up. I'm, like, nope, he's just going to finish him right here in guard, in his guard. And I guess he's been, like, practicing that or something in the gym anyway. So I think he said that in the post-fight conference. It's, like, yeah, I that been, he, he wanted, yeah, he wanted to show off his wrestling. He wanted to show other skills besides striking, something like that. Yeah, and then that, like, yeah, he's been like practicing, like, ground and pound from the guard. It's been a while since we've seen something like that too. I'm trying. I think like the last one I remember of like, and this was a more vicious one, but the last one I remember where someone like got really fucked up like that was uh, when Miocic knocked out over him. But you know that's that's over him. He didn't have the greatest chin. <laughs> but but that's the last time I remember a guy just being in guard like I, I'm just gonna fuck you up right here and then just just beat him. You know. That's crazy. So people are complaining that it was an early stoppage or something. Is that why you you brought that up? Well, it seemed like Nico kind of complained. It seemed like he got over it really quick. Uh, and then yeah, it was kind of uh, I think the the commentators. Uh, I don't know if it was Joe, Anik, or both were kind of saying, like, I'm not sure about that one. But I don't – yeah, you, you know what it kind of reminded me of? of uh, When Rashad beat Forrest Griffin, he had him in that weird, like, cradle position. He was just uppercutting the shit out of him. And, I mean, Forrest didn't get knocked out, but he was just – you just looked in his face. You're like, damn, he's not there. It wasn't as brutal as that, but that's what it reminded me of, like, the position. Yeah, see? Yeah, like you said, his head was bouncing off the canvas like a basketball. Like it did not look good. He was gonna get finished regardless. I think. I mean, it was brutal, man. Yeah, and it was it was such an interesting fight because you could tell they respected each other a lot. It took them a while for them to get loose, and they were like really, really technical. And then all of a sudden, they just start brawling. 
You know, like, and I was just so nervous for Neil. I'm like, dude, come on, this is the only way you're gonna lose the fight. Don't don't let him brawl with you. And he he got hurt a few times in the first, and there was that headbutt where they both got dropped. I got scared <laughs> shit was there. I'm like, this is like Fyodor and uh, Matt Mitrio, and I'm like, oh shit, someone's gonna get up and get knocked the fuck out. That was insane. Like, it looked like it was gonna be a double knockout. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a headbutt, and, you know, with headbutt, sometimes that fucks you up for the whole fight, and it seems like they kind of gathered, they gathered their their wits about him kind of quick, but, yeah, Jeff Neal, Jeff Neal showing that he's he's a well-rounded fighter, man, and he's basically, he has to be in the top 15 now. That, I actually did not kill, was there a, a change in that? No, he's not even ranked. Oh, my God. Yeah, fuck these people, man. I'm, there's probably people I talk to and that follow me on Twitter that, are media members on the UFC rankings, and I- I'm sorry if you guys are doing this. You guys are fucking up. They've never been nothing great, but Jesus Christ, man, what is happening right now? They probably didn't even watch the fights this week. It sounds like. Oh God, that was the best one because the first two on the main card was such a snooze fest. Like I was so happy when they were finally coming out. Like yes, this is the one, and it definitely delivered. I was so sure. happy. Yep. For sure, and then Jeff Neal, he got he got the fifty thousand dollar bonus, and he said in the post fight press conference that he's still, you know, they asked him if he's still gonna, if he's basically gonna quit his day job, and he said no, I like waiting tables, which, goddamn man, that dude's made of something else. Dude, I love that guy. I want to go to that <laughs> restaurant he's working at. It's it's one thing to be a fighter; it's another thing to wait tables, man. <laughs> it's a different kind of stuff. It is, and if you ever waited tables before. Oh my god, it's not fun. I've done it. I, I never, I never have, and I respect people that have. And it reminds me of this old uh, Daniel Tosh joke that uh, he said. Um, he he's like, how many of you guys have never waited tables? Like, oh, clap your hands if you never waited tables. And like half the room clapped their hands. He's like, you people are assholes. He's like, you. I think everybody in this country should be forced to wait tables for at least a month. That way, you realize that your ranch dressing isn't that fucking important. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, dude. So I, I I couldn't stand it. I could not stand it. So I only did it for a short while. I was like, mm. no, I can't do it. But it taught me to really be respectful and you know clean up after myself. Even though there's like you know a bus boy or whoever like that goes around and cleans up. Sometimes you know the waiter does it. I just make sure that I like clean up all my stuff and you know stack all the plates and I'm like, here you go. Yeah, because they don't get paid that much, and oh mm-hmm. my god, I've seen like messes, like horrible. Like oh, I'm sure, seriously. especially families when I mean, once you bring little kids around, you know. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, yeah. this poor person like has to sit there and clean it up. I'm like, oh, so yeah, I think yeah. everybody should like just try it out. I I do try my best with that. I do try my best with that, and I try my best to always put the cart back in the in the spots when I go to the store. I I'm, I don't want to be one of those people that just leaves them out in the fucking middle of the parking lot, you know? Yeah, same. Yep. Yeah. I used to be a stalker, too, so I'm like, yeah, let me just go put this back where it was. <laughs> uh, Instead of some random place. Oh, uh, so, okay. Yeah. But, I, yeah. I don't do that all the time. I'm sorry. I'm guilty of that, but yeah, dude. I try my best with the other stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Neil, man. Nico Price. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Shout outs to them, even to Nico, man. I mean, sucks for him, and I'm glad he didn't get more hurt. But yeah, good, good effort from him. I'm still a fan of that dude too. Um, next up, the co-main event. So Cyborg beat the ever-loving shit out of my future wife, Felicia Spencer. But I'm not mad at her for it, cause God damn it, I realized what a marvelous person Felicia Spencer is. I thought that she was gonna get knocked out in the first round. Just the way she was acting. How? Oh, oh yes. So... Uh, last week, right? With the whole. Yeah. The I mean, we named, we named the episode after her, thanks to you because of the whole fangirling stuff. <laughs> you saw it, right? Like she's fangirling out big For time. Sure. I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, this girl. She doesn't know who she's fighting. Like, do you realize you're fighting Chris Cyborg? I I, I can't have. Question. I kind of have a theory about why the fight went the way it did, too. I don't know if you noticed it. Did you see at the weigh-ins that Cyborg stiffed her? Yeah. I wonder if that really pissed her off. 
Well, they sh- she said that like they shook hands in the hotel, like they ran into each other a couple times, and I guess her is that her boyfriend? I think it was a boyfriend, not her husband. The the big the bigger dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that was, her boyfriend. That, I know. Was I was shocked sure, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah like was... they 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 took pictures with Chris, or he took pictures with Chris, and then I guess Felicia finally ended up taking a picture with her or something like that. But yeah, she was going around like getting pictures with Frankie Edgar and so on and yeah media guys and she's just completely fangirling out i had <laughs> no idea that it would go like that looking back at it now i don't even think she was fangirling out she was like basically marking out man she was just like oh my god i'm here like dude it, it was bad but yeah I, I, I know and i'm i'm joking with the whole she stiffed her like i know cyborg wasn't trying to like be a bitch or anything i'm sure she was just like i'm ready to get it on type thing but that's just my only way to, because nobody saw that shit coming, man. And I, I'm still of the opinion that it's Cyborg fighting the first featherweight and God damn it, I don't know, maybe 10 years. It's been a long time since she's fought like a legit featherweight. And Felicia Spencer's definitely a, a featherweight, but still, the, I mean, those elbows she was landing, you know, she the first time Chris had ever been cut up in a fight. And the fact that she was taking... It's not just that she was taking bombs. I mean, there's been plenty... Marlos Coonan took an ass-beating for four rounds. There's been people who stood in there with Cyborg, but nobody stood in there and traded with her, except for Nunes. And, you know, she... I'm not going to say she got lucky. Obviously, she she knocked her out. She was very skillful. But she's the only other girl who had the balls to, to stay in and strike with her. And she's a thousand times a better striker than Felicia Spencer and has yeah. power. Felicia didn't have no kind of power, not a lot of technique. But just all fucking heart, man. And I, this is this is the first time since maybe Dan Hardy, where I've seen a fighter lose, and I became a gigantic fan. Yeah, she made a lot of fans, man, because of her performance. And just I, I can't wait to see her develop more. Really, I mean, she had Chris up against the cage, and she, just she was fighting her hands, and then she's like throwing elbows. She's seven she, fights in her career. She's what, twenty five years old? Yeah. She's a baby, you know. Yeah, she's still a baby, but yeah, she had her up against the cage and her, her head grinding into her, and she's just throwing elbows. Find her hands and throwing elbows there too. I'm like, holy shit! And taking knees like a champ. I've never seen anything like that before. I'm like, wow. Against Chris Cyborg. What the fuck? I had no idea. So props to her. I know she was getting beat up. She didn't win any rounds, but she definitely won a lot of like fans over. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's what I think that's what the division needs. And I hope that they add other girls to this division and just keep it alive. Yeah, that's a good segue, man. Because honestly, Felicia Spencer and at when in basically two fights has ended up becoming what they wanted so desperately from Megan Anderson. Yeah, definitely. Like, I had Felicia winning that fight against Megan. Yeah, I, I think I did too, but it was kind of a thing of like, well, Megan can wrestle. This was yeah. make sense, but I wouldn't be surprised if Megan wins because she still hits hard. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, she she owned her. And then I guess we could see, obviously, that it's not a fluke and that she didn't just beat up a can because if she can hang in there with Cyborg, she's clearly good. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, we weren't sure. We're like, uh, okay, we'll just go with Felicia because she's a good grappler. Yeah, Damn. basically, as most people did, yep. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, uh, I just, yeah, I just hope that they add more. because And then keep her around because who else is she going to fight? Who else is there? I mean, they she can find more doing... featherweights. She can fight Holly Holm. She's not a real featherweight, though. <laughs> I mean, I hope they do bring in more and just build up the division around her, especially with the things that's you know going on with with Chris. And I don't know if Megan's going to be around much longer. I mean, especially with this fight coming up, I don't know. I don't know if. She's- <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I know. I know that's not supposed to be funny, but I can't help to think about what I messaged you a few days ago. <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? I know. I'm like. Did her visa get? <laughs> I was even joking about it. I'm like, did her visa expire? Or, like, what's going on with this? Yeah, for for those of you that may not know, I mean, Megan has had. There's been rumors that her immigration issue has been 
not exactly kosher. So we don't, yeah, that, that may be a weird one. That, yeah, that's a whole other thing in itself. But, um, well, I, I we were talking so much about Felicia, and we're almost forgetting about Cyborg. So especially since this is this is your favorite oh, yeah. fighter, well, what do you think? Well, what's what's next? I I would think, I would think this is what Dana would want to do, and this is just me. I don't know, being as logical about it as possible it may not apply here, but I would think Dana would want a one fight deal. And it would be the the Nunes rematch, and then that'd go from there. That's what I think Dana would want. I don't know what Cyborg wants. To me, that's the thing that would make most most sense. But obviously, yeah. depending how much she gets paid, uh, yeah. depending when the fight is, how it's promoted. I, I know I know Cyborg isn't just looking for a payday. So, well, what do you think is the most realistic? What do you think Cyborg can do, will do, should do? Obviously, money talks, but at the same time. It wouldn't really just be a one fight deal, especially if she wins the second go around with Amanda. There's going to be an additional because of the championship clause. There's going to be a champ, you know, an extension on her contract automatically. Unless they can like negotiate something and say, no, I just want this fight and I want to move on because of the relationship. It's been rocky. It's been rocky for the longest time. And yeah, early on, I sighed. Because being on Team Cyborg back in the day, you know, Cyborg Nation, like, when I was really talking, you know, within that group and going back and forth with Chris's team and so on, like, some of us did not want her to fight. You know, we wanted her to just move on because of the relationship. It's like, why? You're only getting, like, what, one fight a year? You've been there since 2016. She's been very vocal about wanting to be an active fighter. And she's always just waiting for a fight. There's something always going on. Contracts aren't being, you know, completed. Dana's always shitting on her. They're not promoting her. She's doing all the promotion. Her team is doing all the promotion. They're out there working, you know, putting all these videos together. Or out in, you know, out the the Coliseum or wherever they're fighting, like, promoting her. Whether it's, you know, passing out stickers or trying to get all these fans together, you know, at after parties or, you know, uh, pre-fight parties or whatever. Like, I mean, I was kind of part of that, too. I've seen it firsthand. You know, I helped out with, like, the Holly Holm fight. So, yeah, we were always just like, you know, it's great that she's finally in the UFC, but it doesn't feel good. Yeah. It, it doesn't feel good to see her like this because she is one of the greatest. Yeah, she made a mistake. I think we all do, right? We, we all have had that. But for Dana to constantly shit on her, it's like, come on. She's obviously a draw. She has like cult following, and I don't understand why he doesn't use that. I really don't. So yeah, you know, I, I, at the end, I remember at the end of 2018, you said when we did our year-end show, you know, I I asked, "What's your one wish for 2019?" And you said that. Cyborg finishes up her contract and leaves and go somewhere else. Yeah. So are you still standing by that? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was like that in 2018, 2017, 2016, when she first entered the UFC, I was so happy for her because finally, but it's like 140 pounds. They didn't have to make her do that. Mm-hmm. Why? There was no point in it. I don't understand. And all the issues she had and whatever, but like that's that I, boxing I, shit. That's that shit that like Mayweather was having Canelo do, and then Canelo was having Danny Jacobs do. Like I'm gonna have you go to the lowest weight in humanly possible, just so I can basically laugh at you. Just like uh, haha, you're weak. This yeah. is gonna take it out of you, you know. Even even weirder because it's a promotion. They have nothing to gain from it. It was just like it really did seem kind of sadistic. Yeah, I don't get it, but. She stuck around, you know, she extended her contract, you know. I mean, she has better opportunities elsewhere, like Bellator. She can do kickboxing. She, I mean, Scott Coker is all about having his fighters dabble in boxing, you know. She can do MMA too, and she can be active. Why not leave, you know? Like, why stick around? Here's something that... I had no idea of, and like nobody's talking about it, and that really surprised me. Did, especially that you're so 
you know, obviously you know her. Did you know she has a daughter? Um, it's her sister's daughter. She adopted her. Okay, I kind of, I kind of figured. I'm like, there's no, there's no way for 15 years we didn't know you had a kid. So I figured it was maybe like an adoption or or a, a guardianship or something. Obviously not taking anything away from her, but I'm like, wait, how did nobody know about this? Yeah, she brought her over eventually, and it was a couple of years ago actually. Brought her over, and now yeah, she's going to school here. Um, oh, so she was living in Brazil. Yeah. Oh. With uh, Chris's mom. Oh, Chris's mom still lives in Brazil too. Yeah, I think she's oh, still wow. out there. I haven't really kept up with all of them, but. Oh yeah. wow! Okay. She's still yeah at that point, but um yeah she's up here now. Gabby, Gabby is her name. Cute oh. little girl too. Yeah, when I saw the embedded and um they had a picture of her, Gabby and Chris. It was like a picture frame. Um. That, like showed that and then like they walked out the door i got a little emotional i was like oh my god look at her that's so cute and she's growing up so fast and but that's yeah cool. I, um yeah i don't i don't want to go too much into personal stuff of mine but I'll, I'll just say uh i totally understand taking care of uh nieces and nephews and i'll just leave that there so that that's really cool i didn't know that and that that makes cyborg all the cooler man i i, I didn't disrespect her and uh, I didn't uh, take anything away from her performance. Yeah, I'm really impressed with Felicia, but yeah, I mean, Cyborg did really well too, man. She seemed she seemed like she was uh, very tactical in her strikes, but she was still trying to take Felicia's head off. What I, what I was most impressed with, and I, I know it may not sound like much, but what I was most impressed with is that she didn't get emotional. When you hit as hard as she does, and girls are just usually used to breaking and this girl didn't break. She never lost her cool. She was just like, all right, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm yeah. winning anyway. And that, that that may not sound like it's a lot, but for a girl like Cyborg, who basically just has fights given to her, uh, you know, meaning by her opponents, because they're just like, fuck it, I don't want to be here anymore. For a girl who's just not just so tough to stay in there, but to keep, you know, keep uh, coming forward. That that's a lot, man. That's really that's really big. Yeah, that's why I'm like, you know, I love them both. <laughs> I'm sold on Felicia. You know, yeah, it was a yeah, really too. good fight. Chris had an awesome dance partner. You know, she landed like 122 significant strikes or something. Yeah, I think it was the highest in her. Well, at least in a three round fight, which is not very common that she even goes three rounds, but. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, amazing performance on both. You know, by both women. I mean, big respect to both. Like, it was great. But, yeah. I just, I don't know. There was a lot of controversy regarding, like, um, the booth, too. I, I don't know if you got to hear some of it. But... It was hard for me because I was in a bar. I was in Buffalo Wild Wings. So, it was it was just here and there. Like, every two, three minutes, I would kind of hear a little bit of commentary. But, yeah. No, I, I, I heard Joe Rogan say enough of, like, Cyborg looks tired. And that yes. I guess I guess he's confused it for a five round fight or something. And um, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna say I I he was fully wrong because I remember at the end of the first round, Cyborg did look like she was breathing heavy. But what was weird is that he was saying it from like two minutes in, and then halfway through the second round, and then in the beginning of the third round, it's like, well, there was points where she definitely looked winded, but that doesn't mean that she was exhausted, ready to keel over. You know, yeah. like. Yeah, it was a hard fight. The girl kept coming forward, and she was a tough grappler. Yeah, she's gonna get tired, but she wasn't exhausted. She wasn't gonna just fall to a knee and give up. Yeah, it's just it's just so strange to me that the way they're just trying to paint this. Like, it just makes me wonder. It makes me like go <laughs> the Eddie Bravo, you know, route like conspiracy theory. <laughs> Are they all well, in on it? Like. You do tend to do that sometimes, though. You know? I love you, but yeah, you do that. But well, this is here's a segue. So he was doing this with Frankie Edgar a bit, and we'll, we'll talk about that with the main event, Frankie and and Holloway. Holloway won a, a unanimous decision. Uh, one judge gave it to well, it gave it to Max, but said it was a 48-47. People were appalled by that. I mean, I I thought it was a 49-46. I actually gave Frankie the first round. But, you know, Holloway tends to do that anyway. It seems like he always gives away the first round. But it was clearly running away Max Holloway's. But, yeah, the the, the one thing that I couldn't understand at all was the this is the biggest, uh, most ridiculous comment that 
that Joe made during the broadcast was in the third round, which is one of Holloway's more dominant rounds because Frankie got kind of a takedown in the last 20 or 30 seconds that, oh, he could win this round if he just stays on top and hits him a little bit. Like, that was definitely one of the weirder ones, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I, I'm really not trying to badmouth Joe because, I mean, the, we have another tweet of the week. There were so many good candidates this week, but I, I'm I'm really just trying to be nice. Yeah, he deserves his criticism, but, man, what he did for Miriam Nakamoto, that show, and I, I think I almost cried. That that was that was so fucking cool. Yeah, I was surprised, too. I'm like, what? Because I had no idea she was still having issues and, you know, she needed that, that surgery again. I I remember that fight. It was with I think it was with Lauren Murphy when she got hurt. It was one of the first only one one of the only fights I've seen of hers at that point. And I was like, damn, this chick's tough, and she was winning. And then that happened, and it was like, oh. And I seen she was like thirty eight, thirty nine at the time. Like, oh man, this lady's done. But look at her, man. You you you. She will not give up. It's amazing. She's still gangster. But yeah, thirty thousand dollars for that stem cell injection or some kind of surgery to get it repaired. So, I mean, that's amazing that Joe's like, yeah, here you go. And in, in uh, Panama, or was it Panama, Costa Rica? It's not here. It's in Central yeah. America somewhere, but... That's a lot of money, though, yeah? It'd and be... he cover, he was going to cover her travel expenses and everything, too, so... Yeah. That's aside from that. Yep, so... Yeah, I can't shit on Joe, man. I mean, maybe he was high or something, but... <laughs> Canadians might have a strong lead. I, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, back um, to the fight, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, Frankie. He, God bless his heart, man. He he tried his best. He really did. And I, okay, so this seems like some of the controversy. There was a little controversy with Max that he was being too nice or kind of trying to. He didn't want to end Frankie, so he kind of let him survive. Um, I kind of got that vibe when I was watching it because I felt like I was watching a boxing match. You know, like Pacquiao would do that a lot earlier in his career. Like after eight, nine rounds, like ah, I'll just let this guy survive. There's no reason to, there's no reason to put it on him. But I, I, I don't know. I, I really think Frankie is that tough, and he was fighting a good fight. So I, I think that that Max didn't want to take too many chances because he knew that Frankie was dangerous. But I don't know. Maybe maybe because Frankie is my one of my favorite fighters, I'm giving him a lot of credit. Well, see, I. I, I think I tweeted like beginning of the fourth round, like, come on, Max, time to turn it up. And it, it just looked like to me he was coasting. Um, he wasn't in the matrix like he was with the Ortega fight. Uh, you know, he wasn't switching stances as much. It just, it, yeah, to me, it looked like he was taking it easy or he just wanted to go all five rounds and just prove people wrong that, yeah, he can hang with, with Frankie. And and that is what he said after the fight. They said like, and I don't know who said this. I don't know. Maybe he just saw like one weird journalist saying some weird comments, or maybe a lot of Frankie fans are getting at him that oh that he was gonna gas out and that he can't last five rounds of Frankie and this and that. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't hear anybody say that. And I don't know. So many people love Frankie. But so many people also love Holloway. I think people were pretty fair in this fight as far as their analysis of it. Like, I love Frankie. Frankie's a great fighter, but he's too, you know, Max is too much for him. I, it seems like that's what most people said, and that's basically what ended up happening. Yeah. It, it was still a good fight, but, yeah, I don't know what's next for Frankie. Like, they're talking about maybe him moving down. Yeah, as far as 135, I I, I don't know. Joe brought it up, and... A lot of people have said that's been his weight class for a while, but it'd be cool if he could get some type, some money fights, but that's just not the reality for a lot of fighters. He didn't get that legend status. He's, you know, he fought in the same division as BJ Penn, and he, he beat BJ Penn fucking three times, and the hardcores love him, but I don't know. He doesn't have that type of uh, star power, I guess. He never did, and there's people like Aldo, Anderson, Early in their careers, they didn't have much power, but then towards the end, they started to get it. But Frankie just was never one of those guys for some reason. I don't know why, and it's unfortunate, but what can you do? Man. I wonder. Somebody said something about Faber and Edgar. God, that already happened. 
Somebody said that again. Though, like, for what though? I mean, <laughs> Edgar... money. I don't know. Would that yeah, be a don't... money fight? No, I don't think so. Like because... the perfect money fight in a perfect world would be him and Aldo, but he beat him oh. twice. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that'd be like I was his arch nemesis. Him and Benson Henderson, but I mean, come on, the Gray Maynard, but you know, because that that always bothered me. I'm like, they fought three times and Frankie only won one. Like it's still tied. Gray Maynard won one, Frankie won one, and then there was a draw. But, yeah, it was, it's, I don't know. Somebody said that because Faber just had like a dominant win. And yeah, no, that's something uh, fun. <laughs> that's one of those like. I, it, it happens. It happens in boxing. It happens everywhere. It's like uh, Roberto Duran and Sugar Ray Leonard 3. Like, there was no reason for it. It was way past their primes. Um, I remember the UFC. These are kind of like lesser known guys, but it was a, what was his name? Um, Sam Stout and uh, something Spencer. I, I, I forget his, uh, Spencer Fisher, I believe was his name. The Canadian guy. Uh, they went they went to war twice and then their third fight was like five years later they were both like 36 years old and nobody even cared who they were and it was just a boring ass fight that didn't mean anything like that's that's kind of what that strikes me as yeah true that i wonder what's going to happen with him and well uh one last thing about that fight so volkanovsky alex volkanovsky is the clear number one contender it, it, I don't know if it was Max or so. A lot of people seem to bring up that that could be the co-main event for the Adesanya Whitaker card, but some people are saying that that's not really smart because Max is in too much of a draw and nobody knows Volkanovski. But I mean, as we talked about last week about that card, I think that could be a monumental event and that'd be a good move. All, but the big thing is I don't know if Max Holloway is going to want to take that fight. Uh, I know he didn't really take any damage, but it was still a five-round fight that takes its toll on you, and you have to fly. Well, he lives in Hawaii, so it wouldn't be as bad, but that's still, what, like a 10, 12-hour flight maybe to Australia? Yeah, I heard that he wanted to fight in Vegas next for because of money. So, Well, I mean, yeah, the Vegas tends to have the bigger fights, but, I mean, it also counts on the opponent. I mean... They'd, they'd have to put on a really good card. It seems like they've kind of been fucking Max with the cards, man. Aside from the the second Aldo fight, it seems like the cards haven't been that great. That that 218 card was, was legit. You know, Zinganu, Overeem, Gagey, Alvarez. That was a legit stacked card. But when he beat Aldo the first time, the Ortega, car, the Ortega fight, some of these just haven't seen seemed all that. The cards haven't been that good. Even the Poirier fight wasn't that great. It turned out to be great later on because of his fight and then, of course, the Adesanya Gaston fight, but uh, they haven't really stacked them up, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I like Frankie, too, but who knows? Do you think Volkanovski offers Edgar anything? I'm sorry, offers uh, Holloway anything? I don't know. He's basically Frankie, but stronger and younger and meaner. I try not to think about that fight yet. Like, I know he's going to be next, but I'm like, uh. You think it might be uh, too maybe, much too soon or something? That, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, maybe it is, dude. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, he fought Aldo, but it seemed like Aldo wasn't even there. Yeah. Do you know how I, I didn't know about I knew he'd. I knew that MMA wasn't his first sport. I thought wrestling was because obviously he's a good wrestler. But I guess he was a rugby player for a long time. I don't know. If, did you hear about that? No. Is that why he's so big and stocky then? You know how big he used to be when he was playing rugby? Uh-uh. 2'10". What the fuck? He was a big boy. And you know how tough those rugby, rugby player motherfuckers are. So that explains a lot. Dang. It's just so weird because he's so short, but yeah, that's why he's so so powerful. Crazy man. Mhm. Yeah, I don't know. It, it might be like a quick. I don't. We'll have to see it. Like this, that's gonna be interesting. It, but it's just that Aldo fight. I just have that in my head, and I'm like, well, I wasn't really impressive. Like, yeah, he beat Aldo, but 
I was impressed because Max. I was impressed because that showed that he can fight against type. But I also feel like that doesn't matter too much of Holloway because Holloway isn't necessarily a type. There's not one way to fight him. I mean, Poirier showed if you hit hard and you have the balls to go toe-to-toe with him, you can beat him. But, I, I mean, I guess Volkanovski might have the ingredients, but that's a hard that's a hard thing to pull off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I wonder when it's going to happen. I, I hope not too soon. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, October, right? That's a quick turnaround. I think that's yeah. Too. That's basically two months from now. That fight happened last week, so yeah. you could technically say three months, but no, it's it's really two months. It's like eight, nine weeks. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah. So that 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 does it for the review. Uh, before we get into the the preview, I wanted to I wanted to highlight the tweet of the week. Uh, it's something that came to my attention earlier today. I I totally forgot. I wasn't even aware that Seo Hee Hong fought on, in Rising last weekend, and this gift came up that just made my made my day, man. Seo Hee Hong, here's a tweet. It's by Kyle Johnson at Von Pru. Says Seo Hee Hong further request to Adam White Supremacy crumpling deep jewels champ Tomo Maesawa with a cavalcade of first round knees. Road FC's Empress has won four straight and stopped three of those out by knockout. Miyu is next. And the gif is just her landing some knees from hell. One to the body, uh, a few to the head. She goes down and then just pins her head against the, the ring post and just knees the absolute living shit out of her face. It was beautiful. One of the most brutal things I've seen in women's MMA. And I've been a Hamderlay fan for a while, so... Man, that 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 made my day. So shout out to that guy. He gets tweet of the week. <laughs> I think I saw that. Oh, and then um, people were talking shit about Jason Herzog, the ref that like pulled her off and threw her. I didn't see a problem with it. She, wait, he Jason, didn't really... Jason Herzog was the wait. I no, think that's... it was was who was that ref that was? A... Anyways, I guess the ref like picked her up and like basically like threw her. I I would too, man. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna kill her. Like he had to stop her somehow. Like, cause yeah, it looked fucking brutal, man. Oh, so I had, this is a weird segue, but I, it seemed kind of a uh, appropriate. So I don't know if I told you. I, my 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 lady told me this interesting story. She's gone to some of these like refing seminars, uh, and obviously they they test some of these guys out. They put like scenarios They're like, all right, with these. If these people are, if these fighters are doing this, what well, what would you do? And they put them in like awkward scenarios so they can think on the spot. And she told me that she was at one of Herb Dean's and she she uh, he was testing this this guy about about certain things and uh, it was two women fighting and um, he told the girls to do something illegal. I think to like grab the fence or whatever. And so she grabbed the fence, kept doing it, and ended up, you know, separating them and deducting a point or whatever. And as he was going to to separate them, Herb told the girl, oh, push him. Push the ref. And she pushed him and, like, kind of hit him in the chest. And Herb did it with the intention of, like, yeah, what are you going to do, do if a girl gets physical with you, you know? And I just started laughing. I was like, fuck, that's some fucked up shit to do to a guy on the spot, you know? Wow. And and when she told me, I was like, all right, if that was me, I mean, it's going to be hard in the moment because you're emotional. You're like, what the fuck just happened? I was like, I would think, stop the fight. Like, all right, time, bring a commissioner or another ref in there. Like, all right, we need to settle this. She can't be putting her hands on me, you know, but yeah. it's just like, yeah, basically that's kind of what Herb said. And that's what you should do. I'm like, all right, at least I had the right idea, but that definitely puts you in a weird spot. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. Yeah, Where did she do that at? I, I don't know. Uh, I think, well, Herb, I think lives in LA. I, I don't know where this took place. I'm assuming it was somewhere here in LA. This was years ago. This was way before I met her, but we were watching some fights a few weeks ago and she brought that up and I thought it was the funniest thing. Damn, that's cool. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. For, for you. Because, <laughs> I mean, you got to even think of yourself with that, you know? If you're a female ref and the girl hits you, it's like, obviously you're not going to hit her back, but it really does put you in a weird spot still. Even weirder yeah. for a guy. 
Yeah. Do you, we don't see any more female reps anymore, huh? Well, Kim Winslow, they, they, what buried her, they buried her out in the desert or something. Yeah, that was the only one, right? What yeah. happened? Her, her and Steve Mazzagati got married and fucking went off to, <laughs> fucking ran off to a deserted island somewhere. I don't know. Crazy man. Well, there's that that Brazilian ref, uh, Albuquerque. I forget her first name. She she always refs in Brazil. I think it's like Camila Camila Albuquerque or something. But yeah, there's there's no I other one. And, yeah. Crazy. I know that Kim Winslow. Everyone knows that Kim Winslow's bad, but Kim Winslow's so bad that even my mom who is clearly a casual and doesn't know that much of the sport. She even, even from time to time, she's like, what happened to that big white bitch that, <laughs> that was a shitty ass rap? Like, even she remembers what? that. What? Yeah. That's how bad that's she is. Funny. Put in, juice is funny. Just to put it in a context, you know? Yeah, that's but, hilarious. but let's get into, uh, let's get into this week's preview. So UFC Newark is happening this weekend. Take, it's uh, it's going to be airing on ESPN, and it's happening in the morning, West Coast time. So as I said earlier in the show, I don't care too much about it because obviously they don't care about my needs. Sorry, East Coast fans. I said it when it was first announced, and I'll say it again. I don't give a shit about your needs. It's all about me because I'm a That's spoiled so- LA kid. <laughs> you know, they have to have it in the daytime, right? Because Newark is just bad. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be out there at nighttime. No, no that's <laughs> bullshit. That's not why they had it. They ha- they had it because this was supposed to be a European card. And for some reason, I don't know, scheduling didn't work out. They couldn't do it over there. So they put it in Newark. And ESPN didn't want to deal with the schedule of like, oh, well, we'll put it on at night instead of in the morning. So they're like, oh, fuck it. We'll have it at fucking noon. Fuck you still, shit. you still don't want to be out there at nighttime, though. <laughs> True story. Bad. I've heard things about New York. I mean, I guess I assumed that things got better, but it, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, uh, it's no longer the car theft capital of the world anymore. I don't think. Yeah, I remember that. That was like four or five years ago, right? That wasn't that long. Yeah. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too much. Yeah, I remember that. But yeah, so let's we're gonna get into three fights. There are some interesting fights, but just nothing that was like that compelling. So we're only going to cover three. Uh, we're going to cover one of the prelims, which is Antonina Shevchenko versus Lucy Pujilova. Um, man, I I don't know. I actually hadn't thought too much about this fight, and now thinking about it, I I kind of think Pujilova might take it. I had the same feeling too. I don't know. I would love to see Pudilova win. <laughs> She's uh, such a tough girl. Like I enjoyed watching her fight Liz Carmouche, even though she lost. She didn't do much in that fight, but at the same time, Shevchenko is nothing like Carmouche. Yeah. She's just so – she's big. They're both the same size, I think, so. But, but the thing is, Shevchenko is so, like, ridiculously timid. She's so patient. People talk about – Valentina being timid, she she's getting better with it. She's learning. To, and Antonina's still just kind of plotting, and mm-hmm. it, it only takes strikes when she absolutely needs to. She fights with no urgency. And Lucia, from what we see, especially when you hit her, she gets real mad. She fights like a monster. So yeah, I know. I was watching that Liz Carmouche fight again. I'm like, dude, she's so big. Yeah. Yeah, and then she turned it up at the end of the third round. I mean, like that's the oh, too late. Oh, that's right. Yes, I remember that now. Yeah, I almost forgot yeah. about. It. Yeah, it was a little too late for that. But like, uh, I just wonder, like, she can keep up with Antonina, and yeah, she's gonna turn it up and just fight back or or sub her. That would be the best bet, right? Because I mean, Antonina is all about the striking, so Pudilova's best bet is to just. Put her on her ass. I don't know if I've seen much of Pujilova's wrestling. I know she can clinch pretty well, but I don't know if I've actually seen her ground and pound and submit girls. I'm sure she could. Shevchenko, uh, Antonina anyway, should be good, given with her sister. She's, I believe Valentina's a black belt, and obviously she's got some good grappling and judo skills, but 
we can't just apply everything that Val does well to Antonina. I won't put my money on Putilova. <laughs> yeah, me, yeah, me too. I love that girl. and I, I like Valentina too. It's just, I, I'm sorry. Jesus. I like Antonina too, but she just has some issues. She's not, I, I don't think she's going to be all she was cracked up to be. I think I think they brought her on for the synchronized kicks. Oh my god, I was thinking the same thing earlier. I'm like, it's just because it's Shif- what's her name? God, I'm like blanking out. Is it because it's midnight when we're recording? Basically, yeah, it's been a long fucking day and a long <laughs> night. We've yeah. had our own phones, um, yeah. Oh, uh, Valentina, because they're sisters. I know it's bad for saying that, but I was thinking it though. When I was looking at this, I was like, eh, she's only here because of that. And get yeah. ready for the way, way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Her sister's going to be there. Of course she is. Oh, jeez. I'm going to have Shanna, to mute it. Shanna's going to be losing her mind. Shout out to Shanna. For anyone <laughs> talking shit about that girl, you guys are assholes. That girl's amazing. Oh, jeez. Anyway, moving on to the main card, co-main event. Jim Miller is fighting Clay Guida. This is the most ridiculous fight ever because these guys have been fighting the UFC for 250 years, both, and they've never fought each other. Yeah, it's finally here. (sighs) Way past their prime, right? (sighs) I don't know what to say about this. I don't even have a pick down because I'm just not sure. Well, here's the weird thing about this fight is that, well, there's a certain time, and it's around the same time, like Clay Guida 2012. 2011-2012 2011-2012 was a killer. But then again, uh, Jim Miller around 2012-2013 was also a killer. He was like an eight or nine fight winning streak. And around that time, that would have been a hell of a fight. And I think they were close to doing it once or twice. But um, I don't know. I'm trying to think like in the beginning of their UFC careers, even then, even now, like they're so similar. It, it's it's hard to pick. Um <laughs> they're they're also in Jim Miller's backyard in, in New Jersey, so uh Clay Guida looked good against BJ Penn, but then again it's BJ <laughs> Penn. Sorry for laughing. <laughs> you know what? I'm i I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Clay. Um he I, I think that knockout of Joe Lozon and I know that Lozon ain't what it used to be either, but I think Clay Guida can still surprise people, whereas Jim Miller he can surprise people too, but it's against like UFC newcomers and scrubs, and Clay Guida. I don't think he's gonna give him that that opportunity. I'm just gonna go with Miller <laughs> because Clay went all the way with BJ Penn. He should have finished them, but okay, whatever. Sorry, yeah, could, <laughs> never much of a finisher, but you know, <laughs> but I, bet you, I bet you Miller could have. Oh my god! Like BJ shouldn't even be in there, but okay. You know what? We're not even going to talk about the fact that he's booked for a fight uh, <laughs> because I don't know. Dana saying that this was the last one, and BJ, uh, no, nobody should care. Nobody should care that he's fighting. Nobody should care that he's probably going to get his ass beat. I, 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 I don't get it anymore. I really don't. Yeah, I, I don't get how Dana caved. He, okay. I remember, I remember people kind of gave. I mean, everyone respected Randy Couture. When he fought, when he retired, and his record was like 19-11, which obviously doesn't look good on paper. But BJ record's going to be what, like 18 and 14, 18 and 16? Are the, like, that's supposed to be one of the greatest fighters ever? Like, he's really losing that rap, man. He's, he's yeah. really... And, nobody, uh, nobody would believe that, that he was one of the greatest, just by looking at it on paper, right? Yeah, because you go out with... And you see it in combat sports, you know, Ali... Um, name, name your guy. They went out probably on a three, four fight losing streak, but it was clearly they're way past their prime. But it's like what eight, nine fights in a row. You're gonna be, come on, man. And then the last win you had was against Matt Hughes, who was already on his way out. And yeah, yeah, no. Anyway, enough of that. So you got Miller, I got Guida. Uh, yeah. main event time. This is what we all came for. We all came for the Instagram thoughts and the Make America <laughs> hats. Dude, I'm here for the Kurt Angle walkout song now. Yes, yeah, so we're going to say something that you probably never think that. It seems like Colby Covington is the, probably the most hated guy in MMA. 
but he is doing something really cool. Apparently, he got he got the go ahead to use Kurt Angle's theme song as his walkout as his walkout song this Saturday. And man, I'm I'm gonna be working this Saturday, so I I think I'm gonna have enough time to at least watch the main event. But I really hope I get to see that entrance now because that's just gonna be dope. <laughs> right. That's I'm looking forward to it. Like such a genius idea. I don't like Kobe, but this, yeah. The whole gimmick and every, every all the shit, all of it's bad, all of it's trash, all of it's unoriginal. Yeah. This I guess is unoriginal too because it's somebody else's song. But no, it's it's it actually is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. and then oh god, the Trumps will be there too. Oh, that's right! Holy shit! Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, it's a circus, man. It's the, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like it was already cringeworthy because of the the media scrum, you know. Yeah, it's all that shit talking about Lawler, those girls, like, and then it's, oh, Trumps are going to be there. Oh, and then, by the way, he's using Kurt Angle. I'm like, oh, I perked up. I'm like, cool, okay. Got my <laughs> attention now. <laughs> I totally forgot about little Trump, little Trump yeah. being there. He, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. So, he's really like, running with this gimmick, man. I mean, I don't know. I I don't like it, but I'm not marking out over it like a lot of people are like. Seems people are like it's so fake, it's so forced. But they hate him. So me, it's just like I don't care, man. He's just another Dylan Dennis. It's just the thing is though that at least he's good. Whereas Dylan Dennis is just fucking, you know, well known because of association. Kobe Covington is a good fighter. I just don't think he's nowhere near the level of Robbie Lawler. And I know I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't discredit his cardio and his wrestling ability. He is really good at that stuff. And he's willing to throw, even if it is ridiculous and ill-advised at times. Uh, it could work against Lawler, but I still think he's got enough power and at least enough nuance and timing to be able to counter him and give him the old beat down. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping there's a knockout. I, I, I don't know Lawler's. why... I know, I know. Lawler's had flying, he- uh, flying knees and head kicks and all kinds of n- knockouts, but I want to, I want it to be like that Matt, that Matt Lillian knockout. I don't know why, just like that overhand right, falls to the floor, hits him another two or three times. The Matt Lillian knockout was really hilarious too because he was holding onto his feet and then he put it down gently after he knocked him out. Yeah, it would be so great if Kobe gets knocked out by Lawler. In front of the Trumps. <laughs> one of the just... greatest things that could happen is I don't know I don't know if you ever seen this one, Reen. When when uh, Lawler knocked out Frank Trigg. No, I don't remember that one. You yeah. probably seen it, but you didn't know. Yeah. It. So so I think it was like the fifth round. It was like the last minute of the fifth round. They were going at it, and they just started swinging. And Lawler hit him with like a left hook and a right hook, dropped him, it was hitting him on the way down, and he was clearly knocked the fuck out dead and he looks at him and he takes like a second and he looks at his hand he's like you know what fuck you and he just uppercuts him right in the face as he was sat down by the corner that shit was hilarious and kind of terrifying (laughs) i think it was Caposa for like a long time every time it was fight week he would put this man is fighting this weekend and it was a slow-mo of that last punch and then after he hits him, there's a, a slow mo reaction of Robbie Lawler just evilly laughing. Oh my god, I gotta see if he posts it. Yeah, I, I hope he still does. But yeah, that that was a few years back. Oh my god, yeah. Whew. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I, it does really make sense. Um, because it, even if Lawler did win, I mean, would he get a title shot? Because if Kobe wins, he's supposed to be getting a, a title shot, right? Yeah, it did, honestly, it doesn't make a lot of sense for Lawler to get a title shot. And that that kind of sucks. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of his. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to count that Askren loss against him because I don't think it was a loss. But still, he lost to the science before that. And he was inactive for, what, like a year or two? Like a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And- so he, he doesn't have a lot to go. I know Masvidal was inactive for a long time, but he knocked the fuck out of Till and then obviously knocked out Askren. Like, that's that's a lot of points in a short amount of time. Lawler, he's got some work to do. Yeah. And I I really wanted to see, like, the Askren, you know, Lawler rematch. But 
So here we are with Kobe. So I, I hope Robbie gets it back. Just knockout, brilliant knockout. Like, please don't trade. Yeah, I don't think there's much more to say here. I mean, Kobe's either going to win a 50-45 type decision, grinding him out, or Lolly's going to knock the fuck out of him. Yeah. I, I just want to see that that it doesn't seem like Lawler hates or has any kind of beef with Colby, which is good. But I think it was Pat Militich just said, um, obviously Pat Militich should know, he basically brought him up. He's saying, Robbie Lawler's never talked shit about anybody, but he's undefeated against anybody who's ever talked shit about him. So he said, he said to Colby, because it was after some shit talking to him, he's like, he's like, keep it up, Colby. It's going to work out well for you, you idiot, or something like that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, I was watching Lawler too at the media scrums. He's just like, yeah, I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know what he's saying. Yeah, that's real cool. That's yeah. Cool to go with a child like Colby. Yeah, he's just like, they're asking him like, so how do you feel about you know fighting at like noon or you know this earlier in the day? And he's just like, it's just a fight. I don't care what time it is. It's just he should a fight. Be, he should be fucking furious. I'm talking shit just because I'm not gonna be able to watch him. <laughs> Honestly, if you're fighting, like, hey, get up in the morning. You barely probably even have enough time to eat. Like, oh, yeah, get up in the morning. You got to fight now. Yeah, he's so gangster. He's like, I don't care. It's, just, it's a fight. I don't care what time we fight. I'm like, damn, dude, I love you, Lawler. I love you, Robbie. Get so gangster. Then he started talking about his wife and being a good, you know, dad. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> I was just dreaming for a minute. I forgot your family, man. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So that does it for the preview. Let's get into our headlines. And first up, we got Mackenzie Dern. She's back, folks. It's been like two days since she got pregnant, but she's back. <laughs> two days. I oh, mean, shit. you know what, Reen? I, I, okay, so let's let's actually talk about the as a headline so she's she looks like she's coming back against amanda rebus uh for the san francisco card on october 12th that's the yuana yanjaychik michelle watterson fight this fight's supposed to be a straw weight i'll, I'll let you go from there <laughs> damn it is she gonna make it to the scale i seriously that's oh my god i don't know i don't know how she's gonna do it i mean she had problems before making weight and she didn't have a baby yeah, no, she, she, problems, quote unquote, problems. <laughs> challenges or whatever you want to call it. Eating, like her habits were bad, right? Um, so I mean, props to her for doing this. If she makes weight, great. Maybe she's going to take it seriously now because she has a baby. You know, she's trying to be a good role model. Um, but it, dang, that's that's tough. I was surprised when you told me it was straw weight. Well, I don't know why. I just assumed I'm like this has to be flyweight, and I. I partly assume that because she basically was a flyweight when she fought Amanda Cooper last year. And I'm like, well, yeah, she's, she's coming back from just having a baby. Why is she going to rush to make weight when she wasn't even too keen on doing it in the first place? Now you got baby weight on you. You're going to, if she can do it. And especially if she can win, Jesus Christ, I will take back everything I've said about her. Yeah, but dude. that is a mighty tall task, man. Yeah. See, it makes me wonder, like, she's still breastfeeding. Like, even if she's not, her you know, her boobies ain't gonna be all oh they're not gonna be all hard. They're gonna be fucking plump and yeah, that's gonna be painful. Yeah. That's, that's it's I don't know, it's just like all kinds of things just come up. Like if she is breastfeeding, like does she have to pump before she gets out there and is that gonna be like added weight and like you know, when she gets on the scale, like how does that work? Because I don't think it, we've we've had anybody, any female fighter like come back so soon. Even um, Juliana Pena was out for, what, a year? A little, um, a little over a year or something like that? Michelle Watterson said that she was breastfeeding when she came back uh, in her first fight after her baby. But it wasn't in the UFC. I don't even think it was an Invicta. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it's happened. But, Jesus Christ. Oh, jeez, man. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I think there should be a rule against that. I don't know. But, obviously, that's <laughs> weird because it's like, let me see your tits kind of thing. And... Yeah, yeah, I, I I get it, but yeah, Jesus, that's, that's, that's bad. <laughs> Extra padding in her sports bra because she's might she might leak. <laughs> like, because it's thing, so she, soon. 
Can she get like sidekicked in the boobs and have like milk squirt like on the fucking crowd or something? Is that possible? I don't know. I've never seen it before. Like it's it, it maybe. I hope we don't. <laughs> like I just wow. I have so many questions. Like, are you? Did you? Did you stop breastfeeding or like? Did it not come out or? Is is the baby on like formula now? And you're that's why you're good to go now. And I have so many questions. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was a mom before, so I get it. Prob- probably, I mean, I'm still a mom, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> duh. Um, yeah. Props prob- to the props to the dad. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm assuming the guy's still in the picture. If he's doing all this on his own, Jesus, man, you got <laughs> you gotta you're gonna get a glimpse into a woman's world, you know. Crazy man, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, Lord. I'm hoping for the best, and just hope that. I mean, I don't care whether she wins or loses. I just hope she gets to the fight, makes weight, and uh, yeah, performance. I guess, and we'll take back everything about about them. You know. Yeah, so, seriously. Cakes in Brazil. <laughs> Too funny, man. It's like past midnight, folks. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another another headline. Dana White was asked about the possible Conor McGregor and Jorge Masvidal fight, and he says that he doesn't like the fight that Masvidal is too big for McGregor. When I first saw this, I'm like, wait a minute, isn't like Nate like six foot tall and Jorge is about that tall too? And... Diaz is about seven feet tall and about three hundred pounds. <laughs> I'm like, he had no problems fighting. Nate twice. That was fine Maybe because it was a money fight. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess Chael said something that it's just probably like, um, I can't even think right now. He, he was being kind of like Eddie Bravo ish about it. And he was saying, like, what if Dana said this not to protect Connor, but to piss him off? Because this way, Connor's for sure going to take that fight. Like, man, you're not going to take this fight away from me. You're saying that he's too big. Fuck you. I'm going to prove that he's not. I'll, I'll fight him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like crumbs, man. Just dropping little, little gems here and there, so he can push Connor into taking this fight. Because it would be a money fight for, I think, both of them, right? Oh, Connor's yeah. a name, you know. Jorge is like knocking people dead. I mean, those are the two big names, other than John Jones, correct? Am I wrong? Well, it, that's definitely the biggest fight they can make right now. I mean. I know people would probably say Connor and, and Khabib, but I mean we all know that that ain't happening. That's not what's that ain't right. That's not supposed to happen, you know. Yeah. But yeah, this Con- this is just is fun. Yeah, I, I mean I dig it. Hopefully it'll happen because I mean realistically, like Connor's five nine, Jorge is five eleven. There isn't much of a difference. Yep. So. Yeah, and and uh, Masvidal's gone on record say that he only cuts like. Somewhere between ten and fifteen pounds, he he you know he gets in shape for the fight and then cuts only like five or six pounds during uh during fight week. So so he's not like this gigantic guy. Yeah, I dig it. I'd watch it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, doubt it happens, but yeah, it would definitely be nice. Uh, another headline: Pauliana Batelio and Marina Moros has been scrapped off to the UFC 241 card. That's the Anaheim card happening in about two weeks. Um, I guess Moros got hurt, and they couldn't find a replacement for Batelio, so they've just scrapped it. It doesn't seem like they're going to replace the fight, so I'm a little bit sad about that. I was supposed to watch that fight. I'm going to that event, so always sad when a when a women's card when a woman's fight gets uh, scrapped, but. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened in that fight. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, and the last headline going into the matchups, uh, Yair Rodriguez versus Jeremy Stevens is going to headline the UFC Mexico City card on in September. Um, the rumor was uh, first was Korean Zombie and Brian Ortega. For whatever reason, that didn't happen. No reason has been given and or who those guys might face. But this is a good fight. Uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a long layoff for Rodriguez. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be gonna be an interesting fight. Knockout puncher versus this high flying taekwondo guy. Uh, knee jerk reaction, Rain. What, what do you think? Who would you go for? Probably have to go with Yair. Um, just because you know Stevens, he's been having some challenges. Uh, 
he lost to Aldo and Zabid and I think I, I forgot which fight it was, but he wasn't all there. I don't want to say mental issues. I don't want to say that, but he was really down on himself. So I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure which Stevens we're going to see. Like that killer that we did, you know, that we did see. I mean, he was doing well for a, for a while there. Um, so I don't know, man. It's so crazy that this fight is now on the card instead of the first one, though. I think a big thing. I, I guess I'm just had to go with Rodriguez, and I think a big reason of why is is uh, altitude. Rodriguez has fought in Mexico City, I think, two or three times now, and the last fight with Korean Zombie was at altitude two in Denver, so he's definitely used to this. And I wonder if Steven's going to be because he's had issues gassing in a few fights, just regular three rounders at sea level. With this, a whole another monster, man. Smoggy seven thousand foot elevation air, so crazy. Ah, uh, this is cool. I like it. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good fight. Uh, that does it for headlines. Let's get into the matchups. <laughs> and uh, well, this is uh, somebody getting replaced, but the new matchup: Pollyanna Viana versus Veronica Macedo. Macedo uh, was originally supposed to fight Rachel Ostevich, but she pulled out with an injury. No word has been said of what the injury was. Could be anything from Musada to who the fuck knows what else. It's it's weird to speculate with Rachel. I don't Let's know what to make. Just leave it at that. that. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> I don't know what to make of it, and I know Reen doesn't either. But those are comments we'd rather not say on air. But uh, let's get into another matchup. Another women's fight, Macy Barber, scheduled to fight Jillian Robertson. Uh, this is for the Boston card, the Chris Weidman, Dominic Reyes uh, card. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are on the Jillian Robertson hype train, especially after her win this week against, uh, or last week, I should say, against uh, Sarah Froda. What, what, did, what did you think about this one? I like it. It's kind of like, finally, Macy gets a fight, man. I, I mean, I think, I thought JJ was a good fight, and obviously she got tested there, and she still won, but... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Jillian is a good grappler, obviously, but I feel like that's all she is, and kind of hard for me to see her win. I, I I give. I know that Macy's talented, but the thing is, she's very strong and athletic, and that gets her far. And Jillian's not really strong or that athletic, so I don't know. I just feel like it's good, it can go bad for her, but I really hope I'm wrong because I still want to see that girl lose. And Jillian <laughs> Robinson seems like my kind of girl. She's just scrappy and. And, you know, the unathletic type, which I tend to like. So if she wins, I'd be ecstatic. That's so funny. Silo Cass, um, he's on Twitter. He called her the uh, the fake Ronda Marcos. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's funny. Oh, my God. I saw that tweet start cracking up. Um, I like Jillian, though. I know her record's not that great, but I think she's 4-1 in the UFC. So... Yeah, she's got she's she's been doing good, man. Yeah. Uh, So she's gonna be a tough one. So this is basically what striker versus grappler. Basically, yeah. So yeah, interesting fight. I kind of like Macy. I mean, she. I know you hate her. I know. Yeah, but I'm I'm giving her a shot in this one. I don't know. Uh, JJ Aldrich, I really liked, and obviously, I was right in the fact that she would give her problems. I just thought she would lose, but yeah, Jillian, I think I'd give her problems too, but I actually think she'll win this time. Okay, so we'll see October 18th. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, next up, uh, Derek Lewis and Blagoy Ivanov. Looks like they're supposed to fight UFC 244. That's November 2nd. That's the Madison Square Garden card. Um, Blagoy, who did Blagoy just fight? Was it? Oh, yeah, the Rothwell, I think. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, to, to Ivasa. To oh. Ivasa, yeah, because the Rothwell fight was controversial. And the Ivasa fight was a little bit more impressive. Oh, and... sorry. I just had a thought. <laughs> well, what, what is it? So, wait, he's going. Lewis, Derek Lewis is going back to MSG? Because he fought DC there, right? He fought DC and then he lost to Dos Santos like fun. months ago. Damn, dude. That's cool. Good for him. Yeah, I hope. I mean, it seems like people. Well, I don't know. John Jones says they get taxed a lot there, so I don't know. Hopefully, oh. it means a bigger payday for him. But who knows? But a good job for Bagoy, man. I mean, he he needed a big fight, and 
Derek Lewis is the kind of guy that he can beat and look good against, or he's going to get his shit kicked in. It's going to be funny. <laughs> Just kick him in the gut? Yeah. Yeah. Literally. And then, man, you know you can never hurt. That's the one thing. If I ever see Blagoy go down from body punches, I'd be like, damn, that's one scary motherfucker because he got stabbed. I think he could take body punches all day. That's so funny. That's right. He did recently fight, huh? Yeah. And he oh, looked, yeah, uh, it was on the Sofudo card. Duh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was the first fight in the main card. Yeah, I think I was going for Tuivasa. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Eh. Yeah, I think I picked Blagoy, but I think it was just kind of like, yeah, I'll just go different than you. Yeah. <laughs> so that does it for the MMA stuff. Let's get into our new story of the week. And the headline is, Antique Dildo Will Stay in Ireland After Sex Shop Owner Campaigns to Save It. You guys really need to see this thing, because it's fucking ridiculous. So it's made out of ivory. It's Victorian era. Yeah, it's a it's a 130-year-old ivory sex toy. <laughs> and it costs uh, almost $5,000. And uh, I guess, what was it uh, that we read, Rain, that soldiers, this was a gift from a soldier to his wife? Yeah, that was fighting in China? Yeah. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> like, uh, okay. I guess, I guess the Irish just really like dicks, though. They love Conor McGregor, and you know, <laughs> and now they they're very proud to get a dildo. Yeah, when I first saw the picture, I'm like, wait, how big is that? Like, because there's no measurements. They they didn't put down any measurements on this article. Um, so I just like wonder, like, how big is this thing? Like. The thing looks like it might be fucking 13 inches, but yeah, it is a little <laughs> hard to tell. And the thing that, that that I just kept marveling at is the ingenuity and the technology. Yes, of all things, technology. Uh, here's a little thing that says, the sex toy has a little heart carved at the base of it where the owner's finger would lie. There's also a compartment that could store a lock of lover's hair, which is kind of weird, or where hot water could be added to heat it up. So they were really thinking this shit out when they were doing it. Wow, dude, that is so crazy, man. <laughs> that, I mean, it's just, it's wild to me, like, to heat it up, to warm it up. Yeah, I don't even think many toys now can claim to do that, you know? Right? Like, back in the day, they were thinking about all that? Like, jeez. And if you look at this, too, like, yeah, the, the top, there's the head, and, like, there's a little wrinkle, and then, like, yeah, there's a, <laughs> it a is smooth, detailed. yeah, like, there's a smooth shaft, like, what the fuck? It's made out of ivory. It's it's crazy. It's like almost majestic. Like I <laughs> I don't I I don't know what else to say about it. A majestic dick. <laughs> Hundred thirty year old ivory sex toy. I do wonder how long it took it, it took them to make it. I mean yeah. I don't know the whole carving process and all that, but they definitely put a lot of work into it and put a lot of detail into it. Right? I have so many questions. Like, okay, who is it modeled after? <laughs> you know, like, how long did it take? Okay, did an elephant really die for this? Like, what is oh, going yeah. on here? Oh, of course the name elephant died. That, that was the thing back in the day. The, the ivory was, you know, it wasn't looked down upon back in those days. Yeah, like, did it come with the letter? Like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, you send this to your wife? It's one of those things I hear so you can go fuck yourself type thing. <laughs> Literally. Oh my god. Yeah. It, just... it, it, it does sound ridiculous, but the more I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, this is pretty romantic, man. Your guy's off fighting. Obviously, he can't do nothing for you. He's like, here, take care of yourself. Right. It is kind of romantic in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta be uh... one. You gotta be one confident motherfucker because this thing looked like it's the. The, Hata- the Hitachi of yesteryear. And if you guys don't know what Hitachi is, you're not whores. Oh, my God. It's, it's so crazy. Just looking at it, and I'm like, I can't stop staring at the picture. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you can't, Rain. <laughs> I'm like, how big is this thing? I'm sure, when you, I'm sure when you guys listen to this or see this, you will probably be thinking the same thing, though. I don't, <laughs> I don't blame you. Just, just making a little fun. But, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, that, that that I think that does it for tonight. We gotta I think when you start talking about ivory dildos, that's, that's a good way to end. You can't stop that. So. Dude, my my cheeks hurt from smiling, staring at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? 
It's in a nice box and yeah, just look at the picture. I yeah, it's made of like velvet and has a mirror. Yeah, it's 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 some it's some elitist shit. It's top one percent type shit. Type of thing that like Bernie Sanders would not approve of. It's way too <laughs> high end. Anyway. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway. That's gonna do it for us tonight. Thank you for thank you guys for bearing with us. I know it's a long show and it was even longer for us to record it. It's been a hell of a day, hell of a night. And I appreciate for any of you guys that stick around. Uh please like, retweet, subscribe, share, review, anything you can do. You can find us anywhere, Stitcher, Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, or I think it's called Apple Podcasts now. But we're basically across all platforms you can find me at juice underscore mma green where you at fox with you on ig and twitter and uh you can find the the podcast account at ifox with juice on twitter and instagram as well um i i might have some things lined up i know i've kind of made some false promises in the past or just been caught up trying my best right now though and uh just keep your guys keep your eye on my social media something might surprise you but uh Yeah, that does it for us tonight. Again, thank you guys for sticking around, and we'll catch you all next week. Later. See ya.